Deep within the belly of a cargo ship, a battle rages. These aren't just piles of coal, they're mountains of fire. Burning fiercely in the enclosed hold, smoke chokes the air and the heat is immense. Yet outside, the ship is surrounded by an endless expanse of water. You'd think a fire, especially one on a ship, would be easily extinguished. But with coal, it's a completely different story. We try to douse the flames pouring water onto the burning mass, but watch closely. The water hits the surface, turns to steam, and the fire underneath just keeps burning. That's because the water can't penetrate deep enough to reach the core of the coal, where the true heat resides. It's like trying to put out a bonfire by just wetting the top layer. So, what's the solution? Isolation, on land. Or once the cargo is offloaded, the strategy changes. Heavy machinery is brought in to separate the burning coal from the untouched piles. It's about containing the threat, not directly fighting it with water. The same principle applies to open coal mine fires. You'll see flames licking out of the ground, but rather than flooding them, which can be dangerous and ineffective. The focus is on creating fire breaks and isolating the burning sections, but the most insidious coal fires burn deep underground. These can ignite from various sources, and once they start, they are nearly impossible to extinguish. Hidden from view, they can smolder for decades, even centuries, slowly consuming the earth above. And this is why water, when used with coal fires, isn't typically for extinguishing. Instead, it's used strategically to cool the surrounding areas, to prevent the fire from spreading to new fuel sources, and to minimize further damage. It's a battle of containment, understanding the unique and persistent nature of these powerful burning mountains.